Welcome to the Arsenal Video Club, our first edition of 93. Coming up in the next hour... Our last league action was November's home defeat against Manchester United, and December brought little improvement, starting at the Dell. Now Benali. Dowie pulling away on the far side. Benali's found him. And Madison going in! And he's placed the header perfectly for Southampton. Cut out by Jensen. Right behind Moncao. Campbell up with him. Campbell onside. Against the post, against Benali, right lines it up. And really should have equalised. That's a lovely ball from Letizia for Madison. And Dowie! Madison chasing Limpar and holding him up for a moment. Penalty! Terry Herlock on Ray Parler, just inside the area. Ian Wright, who had such a wonderful time in this fixture last season, his league debut for Arsenal. Oh, and that sums up the way things have gone today. Not well at all for Wright. Or oh, Torsvet took a chance there against the combined might of Campbell and Wright. But it sets Spurs going forward with Paul Allen, Jury on his right. Samway's trying to stay onside through the centre. Oh, it's come off Lederson. Allen, who really started it, has finished it for Tottenham. 20 minutes gone. And look who's here. It's Adams. Beautifully played. And the captain, who hates losing in any game, but especially in this one, that was... Uh, Beautiful work. Merson's corner. Adams makes the first move. Bold! Corset <laughs> saw it all the way. He needed to. Otherwise, Bold would have equalised here. Using the space vacated by Adams. Good stop. And right! Who <laughs> can't bail Arsenal out this time. A rare miss from Wright and a great win for Spurs, but the result was overshadowed by an off-the-ball incident. The FA's subsequent action, a three-match ban for Wright and the media's relentless hounding of England's most gifted striker. That's part and parcel of being a, a star in, in, in sport, not only in football. Um, it's a great thing in the British... Uh, one of the British characteristics is to, is to build somebody up to knock them down again and it's something that we'll, uh, we'll handle and we'll have to handle it because that's just the way it goes here in Britain. He's been brilliant to me all the way through everything that's happened to me and uh, you know I I'm just pleased that he's stuck by me like that you know. Early in a one-off is, is a thing that, 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 that coaches and managers uh, can't put into players, he's just a natural goal scorer. He pops up in the right positions at the right times and you can't coach that. Uh, but I'd still like to think that we, we can work on him in certain as aspects of his game. But uh, it's just a one-off. He's great in the dressing room, fun to have around the place, and uh, produces a good scoring goals. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think it's a good signing. All, all the press people and that they know that I'll, I'll always give them a couple of minutes of my time and talk. And sometimes maybe I talk too frankly to them as uh, as as uh, I should do. You know, it's something that the boss is always telling me about. But they know, they know what I mean. You know, it's never it's anything derogatory about anybody. But, you know, they just blow it up and twist it round and and make it into a big story. You know, and uh, sometimes you know you just think um, 
you don't want to speak to them, but you know, you, you do want to speak to them. You just don't know what to do sometimes, you know. Time now for some light relief and a chance to recover from that upset at Spurs in our golden goal section, thanks to a request from Mr. Dennis Sheehan of County Cork. The 1986-87 campaign saw the Gunners paired with Tottenham in the League Cup semi-final, and the two legs weren't enough to separate the sides. 210 minutes of football and the tie was level on aggregate. So a replay required and Arsenal lost the toss. Let's go back to White Hart Lane on that March evening in 1987 for one of the great North London derbies. Got a good free kick in there. And a chance! Clive Allen! Not the time to be making mistakes. Davis. Allenson onside. Now here's a chance for Arsenal. Goff trying to close him down. He's got it! It's 1-1! One, one. Yet another Arsenal comeback. Yet another surprise for Tottenham. Deep, deep one. Quinn hoping to get on the end of it. It comes to Allenson. Driven first time. It might go anywhere. Rook Castle. Arsenal are through to Wembley. Back to the league now and the remainder of 92's fixtures, starting with Middlesbrough. Right. Mickey Moen is the defender. And Ian Wright's got the better of him, but not the better of Stephen Pears. Fleming did well to keep it in. Here's Hignett. Confusion here, and it's gone in off David Seaman. Wilkinson claims the goal. Flats is away for Arsenal. Mark Flats, brilliantly done. Oh, well, it deserves a better conclusion. Throw from Leaderson. Shot, right goal. It made it look so simple. The ball flew back off the post. It needed a very short touch. With time ticking away, just eight minutes left. Kevin Campbell struck it superbly. Flying back off the post. Tucked away by Wright. 1-1. One, one. And goes Leaderson. Here in support, still lead us for Jensen. Well, Arsenal still waiting to see him score. Jensen made it his. Very tight, broken up by Linigan the younger. David, that is. But it's run on here for Wright, it's inviting for him. And Clive Baker kept it out very well indeed. Nice change of direction from Flats and a change of pace as well. Dazelle defending deep. Wright hoisted high. Stockwell's header out. Winterburn 
Ipswich can't prevent the shot, which was deflected, and a superb fingertip save by Baker. That's no offside. Campbell, oh, neither one thing nor the other for Arsenal. Down by Bold, had the time to do so. Wright takes it up and runs Linnigan. Still Wright. Oh, everything but the opening goal. Can't let him get away like that, Ipswich. Clip forward by Hillian. That's Bold and Baker again. Here's York, taken on by Parker. Saunders has got behind Bold, and David Seaman roaring off his line, blocked very well indeed. Field from Staunton to York. Penalty for Aston Villa. David O'Leary stuck out a leg, and down went Dwight York. Dean Saunders right on half time. It's one 0 Aston Villa. Now Limpar, he's away. Barrett straining to get back, can't prevent the shot, but just did enough to put Limpar off target. Smith. And Spink makes an acrobatic save from Ian Wright. Cut out by Houghton, and it's gone straight through for Saunders. And David Seaman again comes out with great credit. Still 1-0 to Aston Villa. The building work on the new North Bank stand continues, and it promises to be the most modern and comfortable stand in the Premier League. Architect Rod Sheard gives us a progress report and updates us on the new features that fans can look forward to. The North Bank stand is a massive challenge, really because it's one of its kind. There's never been a football stand anywhere in the United Kingdom, or for that matter Europe, that's going to be anything quite like it. It's going to have a level of facility inside which football supporters have only dreamt of. And it's taken a fantastic vision of the Arsenal board to be able to put this together. The bond issue, uh, the residents association, the planning authorities, the building regulations, the football authorities. Sometimes one can feel that everything is stacked against a building, a trend-setting building like this. But in this case, it's taken this tenacity of the board that's pushed it through this far, and it's got us what we're starting to look at today, the outline of the most up-to-date, most modern grandstand anywhere in football in Europe. It's doing very well. Obviously, a building of this complex nature uh, always goes through a few hiccups through its lifetime, and we've certainly had a few here, but we managed to solve them. There's a real spirit in the construction team, uh, one of joint effort, at the end of the day, trying to achieve something very, very special here at Highbury. It's going to have very extensive facilities. It's obviously going to cater very well for the football supporter in terms of uh, fast food outlets, themed areas, for a whole range of food and concessions. Uh, you're going to be able to buy uh, all your normal things that you'd be able to buy at the Arsenal shop at Finsbury Park or here. And all through the stand there are going to be customer care centres, uh, video game arcades specifically related to football. It's just going to have every type of facility a football supporter could hope to get at his grounds. I think that the thing that most people will notice out of the ordinary will be when they come into the ground floor, there's a large open space in the center. It's not exactly an atrium, but it's the, um, a double height space which links the ground floor and the first floor. What we're really building here is a, is a brave new world for football, a North Bank stand which is going to be built at, uh, at the end of Arsenal that is going to be outstripping anything else in the United Kingdom.
it will be ready for the first game of the next season. Now it's cup action. Two tricky ties in a week, starting at Yeovil, home of some famous cup upsets. We're really expecting a spark from Anders Limpa. They brought him back for matches against Leeds and Manchester United in the Premier League, and he didn't, in truth, deliver in either of those. Lost his place again. Bold with a good flick, and Enright scores. In the 25th minute. Can't be too many better playing surfaces in, use in the third round of the FA Cup around the country today. Like using the full width of the pitch. And it's another Arsenal corner and another test for Yeovil. Five minutes left in the first half. It's a short one to Hillier. Well saved by Coles from Smith, who, when he met that one, must have thought that it was 2-0. And the goalkeeper, who played once for Arsenal Juniors as a 15-year-old, trying to stimulate something with his clearance. Trouble it's right who's looked to chip Coles and he's done it brilliantly. And in stubbish time, Arsenal's grip now much more solid. And Ian Wright, who has a real track record, of course, in the FA Cup in his time with Crystal Palace, those two goals in the final, of course, against Manchester United. And two goals here, the second one a classic. his hat-trick midway through the second half and David Coles is angry again but Andy Wallace didn't put it out of harm's way and with Ian Wright around there really was only one outcome Wallace trying to make amends for his mistake and he's done it very well for Spencer he's round the goalkeeper but the ball hasn't ended up in the net and it's a penalty Ten minutes to go. Batty for Yeovil. Oh, that's perfectly executed. 3-1. Four days later, and a fog-bound Scarborough was the venue in the Coca-Cola Cup. Ian Wright emerged acrobatically from the mists with Arsenal's best effort of the first half, which ended goalless. We'll join the action in the second period. Arsenal in a hurry to take the free kick, too much of a hurry. Winterburn helping get the ball back. And with thoughts of attacking now. Very positive thoughts indeed from Nigel Winterburn. That really is a splendid goal. Typical of his tenacity. And Arsenal in this very awkward tie. Lead, Nigel Winterburn. The fog beginning to drop again, but that's Foreman in the gathering gloom, and not even the mist could obscure the quality of David Seaman's save. To preserve the Arsenal lead spectacularly. Competition time now, and the winner of a signed copy of Nick Hornby's Fever Pitch and an autographed match ball is one of our Scandinavian viewers, Arne Finn Varga from Norway, who correctly stated that Frank McClintock joined Arsenal from Leicester City. This time you can win an Ian Wright sweatshirt, signed by the man himself. All you have to do is tell us against which club Ian made his Arsenal debut. Answers to the usual address by the first week in May, and good luck. 
In the first Premier League fixture of 93, Sheffield United visited Highbury and proved a tough nut to crack. Here's Jensen. Seems to take Kelly somewhat by surprise. Taken early by Wright. So excitingly as well. Down by Smith. Arsenal continue to have much more of the ball. With half time approaching. Still nil nil. Limpa. Who's he going to line up here? It's David Hillier. Fine try! Exceptional goal. Only his second for Arsenal. A lot of players between David Hillier and the back of the net. It needed an excellent shot, and Hillier provided it. Oh, Kamara was a bit casual there. Robbed by Limpa. Arsenal looking for the insurance of a second goal. Limpa! Too hot to handle for Kelly, and it's just gone away from Merson. Good throw by Seaman. And Winterburn, who's never bashful when it comes to attacking down the left hand side. It's a massive kick by Kelly, and it's given a goal to Adrian Littlejohn with only three minutes left. Now Quinn, who's never scored against Arsenal, his first club, and still hasn't, thanks to Seaman. Came off Phelan, but Flats is in behind him now. Still Mark Flats, and still Merton! Arsenal in front, 11 minutes left. Understandable delight from the scorer, an appreciation of the fine football here from Flats. The work for his angle, and Merson did the rest. A timely win there, Arsenal's first in the league since November, and the victory was in no small part due to yet another product of the Highbury youth system, Mark Flats. Yeah, Mark's another one. Uh, probably his progress was uh, harnessed a little bit last season when he had two uh, broken legs. So that stopped him. Otherwise, he'd be more of a little household name. He'd be figuring more in my plans. But uh, he's probably a year behind everybody else because of his, uh, you know, the, the two bad injuries that he's had. It's a credit to the 20-year-old winger's strength of character that he fought back from those terrible injury problems to win a first-team place. Now he's relishing the opportunity. I've enjoyed it at the moment, you see. Um, I've, had a, well, I've been in and out of the team. Um, and while I've been in there, I've done my bit, I could, I could say. And uh, the boys have been tremendous to me. I think uh, if you're good enough, then the boss has obviously shown in, in the past, he's put himself and Dave Rowcastle, numerous players in. And it's his philosophy, if the, if the boys are good enough, then he's going to put them in and give them their chance. Another revelation is the ladies' team. Vic Akers' side have swept all before them in their first season in the National Premier League, with a 100% record so far. We went to Leighton Wingate to check on their progress. And we had to wait less than five minutes for proof of their impressive form. A powerful run and shot from Joe Churchman, and Naz Ball on hand to finish things off. Goalmouth scramble now, and a fabulous piece of opportunism from Joe Churchman. Does anyone remember that George Best goal? Just before the half hour mark, and a speculative long ranger from fullback Kirsty Peeling proved too much for Maidstone's overworked keeper. 3 0 at half time. Five minutes into the second half and more embarrassment for the Maidstone keeper. To be fair, Michelle Curley's corner fooled everyone. No mercy now and another set piece. And another goal for Naz Ball. The 
The Arsenal striker completed her hat-trick 20 minutes later, heading home Joe Churchman's free kick. Ten minutes from time and a terrible mix-up in the Maidstone defence. Substitute Debbie Smith made sure and the ladies notched up their 12th win in 12 games. George Graham must be looking over his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I doubt that, but uh, it's just nice that uh, the club are, you know, have got a women's team that, uh, to be proud of and, uh, and it's nicer for the local community that they can come in and, and, and see these sort of games as well. And, uh, and the supporters, when we have gone back there with our trophies uh, uh, at the beginning of this season, give us a very, you know, a terrific ovation, and uh, and they, they like to see the results as well. And uh, I'll get back now and get the result on the board, and uh, I'm sure that'll, that'll please a few people as well. George Armstrong won't be so pleased. His reserve side have now lost more games than they've won, and are well off the pace in 10th spot. side are in much better shape. Arsenal's homegrown talent are just one win off top spot in the South East Counties League with a game in hand. Back with the first team now and a crucial night at Highbury in the League Cup quarter final. Still nil-nil. Mercer. Smith going to the left, right pulling away from Chattel, making space for himself. It came off crossly and Laws there to stop Smith following in. But Arsenal showing signs here of settling to their task in the second half. Jensen uh, helped by Campbell, who comes up with a splendid ball for Ian Wright. Is this the moment for Arsenal? It is! Right scores, but great credit to Campbell, who joined in a midfield battle to get the ball back for Arsenal. And then timed the pass perfectly. And one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, right unerring. Pierce got to the ball, but then lost his balance. It's Campbell again. Providing the pass for Wright. Crossley snatched it from his toes. Merson, all Arsenal. Dixon on the gallop. And Ian Woe just getting there, but in his anxiety to keep the ball in play, has given it straight to Jensen. Smith. For Campbell, for right, deflected, goal! 12 minutes left. A spiralling celebration from the scorer. And that might be too much for Forrest to recover from. You can see here the deflection that took it wide of Crossley. A fortnight later and familiar opponents in the FA Cup. Arsenal needed four attempts to beat Leeds United in 1991 and things were just as tight this time. You would say that there's more variety potentially to Leeds in the middle of the pitch. But Arsenal have got plenty of variety of their own in Merson. Oh, Campbell might reach this, he has done, it's hit the top of the post. And into the header. Now Winterburn, better Martin, crowd are buzzing a little bit now, it's opened up a little bit, seems to have upped in tempo slightly. Campbell, Smith was facing the goal but Campbell turned with the ball and produced a shot of considerable venom. His speed, he scored! Chapman, Dorigo, flick for McAllister, might manufacture something now for Chapman, can he bundle it in? Lee Chapman has done it at the expense of Arsenal again. 
The Leeds players were saying, well, he may have been a bit below par recently, but you can bet he'll pull something special out tonight, and he has done. Campbell. Smith. Tato tap tap of uh, passes between the two. There's Carl Schatt helping out at the back again. Winterberg. Here's Parler, who's picked a route through. And Arsenal have won back. A driving run. And a very well taken goal from Ray Parler. He's already produced one probing run for a goal. Mercer. Great goal! Two, two. Paul Mercer pulls the rabbit out of the hat for Arsenal. Can he clinch it? He might still know. And the whistle is the final one. George Graham, I'm sure, will join in the applause for Arsenal's second half. And there, what a lovely shot to sum up a splendid night. That replay to come. But first, a Sunday fixture against Liverpool. Redknapp's made a mistake. And in the end, Smith, who took a while to master the bounce, very nearly outmaneuvered the goalkeeper. In from Merson, up goes Adams. And really, it was one where, as the ball dropped, Adams jumping with Barnes, you might have backed Arsenal to take the lead then. Smith going in with the header. Masson! Oh, well, James got in the way of it. And it was a genuine stop. He anticipated which way Merson might hit it. If he hit it well, which he certainly did. All anxiety when the ball is at McManaman's feet for Rush again. He's got the better of Seaman this time. Down he goes. Andy Linegan, penalty for Liverpool. John Barnes for Liverpool. This for the lead, they have it. They're one up now, but here's Campbell. And has he given another one? He has, Mark Wright. The penalty entrusted to the man in form, Paul Merson. And James has saved it. And Mark Wright is first to say thank you very much indeed. That home defeat was soon knocked off the back pages by the arrival of a new face at Highbury. Well, new-ish. The Gunners paid £2 million for an international defender they released in 1986 for just 200,000, Martin Keown. Really pleased to, to be back, and uh, you know, won't feel complete though until I play my first game. So uh, just have to wait for my chance. Uh, I don't think anybody could have planned it, but um, you know, I'm back now, and I'm pleased to be back. But I think when you're a young lad, um, you know, you, you're watching from the stands and uh, hoping you're going to be out there. And once you do get the chance, um, I think if you are, speak to any young lad here, you know, it's it's fantastic. You have to pinch yourself to to, to realise you're in the team. Um, you know, and that was great for me being in the side. And um, I'm hoping that you know I feel exactly the same once I get in here. Um, I hope it's not. I don't have to wait quite as long. Um, you know, I had to wait obviously three years then as an apprentice. And um, you know, anyway, you know, I'm far more experienced now. And um, just hoping, as I say, to, to to get an early involvement. After three years at Aston Villa, Martin moved to Everton for three quarters of a million pounds. 
And during his stay at Goodison, won nine England caps. So maybe leaving Highbury was the right move. To some extent, I was disappointed that I left. You know, I, I think I dived into the decision really, and it wasn't until afterwards I realised, quite in fact, what I'd done and uh, the talent and the quality of players which I'd left behind me. But um, you know, as I say, that's that's all done now. I feel as if I went away and I learned a lot of things as well. You know, you can be protected here at this club. Um, you know, I've gone away and um, had to think for myself a little bit, and I think I've come back uh, an improved player. Press reaction to Martin's return was largely negative. Why buy another central defender when you already have Adams, Bold, Linigan, and O'Leary? Perhaps they should have asked the boss. I thought it was sad, really, the publicity we got for that, really, because, I mean, it was a very positive move uh, by, by the club. Uh, and people might be thinking, why have they bought another centre half, you know? Uh, Martin elected to leave the club uh, at a very young age, just when I took over, and I had one chat with him and never really get into any details about contracts at all. So when you hear all this rubbish talked about in the, the popular tabloids, I mean, it's just, it's just negative uh, reporting. I think it's a good buy for the future. I think all successful teams need a very good, uh, good defence to build on. We have always had a good defence, and I think it'll be a very, very big asset, not only for this season, but for a few seasons to come. And it's a good positive signing. Before it went to the end of the season, out of contract, and then it becomes an auction. Uh, people have been criticising the club, and me in particular, for not buying a quality midfield player. I can understand that, that criticism. Uh, but that doesn't mean I stop buying uh, players in other positions. Uh, it doesn't mean I, I cancel everything just because I'm looking for a midfield player. You know, uh, that's, that's where the media, and the, uh, they don't understand the art of football management, uh, and it surprises me quite a lot. Whatever the papers say, the new, improved Keown is back, and he's certainly going to give it his best shot. I'm looking really forward to getting the, the kit back on again and um, get out there and um, do my best for the club. A week in football can make or break a club season. For the Gunners, it was a week and a bit, and one of the toughest 10-day periods Arsenal have ever faced, starting with that cup replay at Leeds. Right, we've seen so little of him, and Smith, oh, that's a brilliant goal from a player who must have been wondering where the next goal would come from. Lukic beaten by a definitive touch at the near post from Alan Smith. There's 20 minutes plus stoppage time to go. McAllister, shot, 1-1, one, one. popping up in the middle of the pack, Carl shot for Leeds United. Free kick to Leeds. Well, there's a couple little fanciness, Diego and McAllister. McAllister! It was a blur! Until it bowls the net! Gamble. Right! Oh! It's cracked in! And after the level again! And these two teams, who are so often inseparable when they Ian Wright has got a crucial goal, and from Leeds' point of view, a soft one. Mercy. Oh, my word. From an outrageous angle. He nearly made it happen again for Arsenal. Adams. Here's Smith. Oh, to Rigo. It's fallen to Merson. And 
and the first real chance of extra time goes Arsenal's way. Merson's corner. Adams! Mercy. Oh, it's right. This could be the cup tie. It's in. Ian Wright. His second goal of the game. Great delight down on the Arsenal bench. They were 2-1 down when he took a hand. They're 3-2 up now. Roe Castle. And Arsenal have an extraordinary victory. And Ian Wright is back in business in the best way possible. They were 2-1 down when he scored his first goal. To take the game into extra time, in which Wright has settled it in the second half. A famous night and one of the Gunners' greatest comebacks. Four days later, Wright and co. were expected to carry on the cup magic in the first leg of the League Cup semi-final. Cut out by Hillier first of all, and it's Hillier's pass. It runs on here, past Smith for Campbell. Crystal Palace back pedaling. Campbell takes them off. And Nigel Martin kicks him out. Roger. The Palace with their own formula here of uh, man-for-man -man marking to try and deny Arsenal a team that have got the better of them so often right and the cross goes his marker Eddie McGoldrick and brings him down it's a penalty for Arsenal right scores another happy return to Selhurst Park Change in personnel at half time, and Palace looking for a more positive approach now. Here's Coleman. Bowery. Little flick from Osborne. Here's the substitute. Watts. And a penalty's been given against Tony Adams, who's absolutely livid, feeling that he got to the ball. And I must say that was my first impression as well. There's a bit of a jump in there, and maybe that's what the referee didn't like. Palace have had so many problems with their penalties this season, but Osborne tucks it past Seaman, and it's 2-1. Great play by Winterberg. Thomas beaten by the bounce. Merson goes round the outside this time. Oh, and Sully in Ian Wright's territory, really. Arsenal just trying to re-establish themselves so dominant in the first half. free kick in comes Campbell and Smith just got a touch as the ball dropped from Kevin Campbell's challenge Alan Smith second his scoring slump of recent weeks well behind him now and it's 3-1 Two days after Palace, with Wembley on their minds, the Gunners in confident mood.
but no one's satisfied yet. And if we played AC Milan, we'd stop their run. Stop the run. Just for the last as well. Penalty in the last minute. I, I say the same things at the start of the season that I say at the uh, a club like the Arsenal. We've got to be challenging for all three major honours. Um, it, it's you know it's important for our fans, uh, the club, and uh, you know we're that big that we, we should be up there and challenging. And anything less than that is is falling below our standards. Um, we're still in there kicking at the moment, and hopefully you know uh, we we can continue and bring success to the club. One man is bringing success by the bucketful, and with three goals in two games since that FA ban, he's enjoying every moment. Yeah, it's nice to be back. Um, all I want to do is score goals, really, so uh, and stay in the team. So any any kind of um, so-called holiday I have, is, you know, full still not, you know, is not very good for me. I just like to be in a team, you know. I think it's a, good, it's a great team. One of the team's greatest supporters is 20-year-old Ryan Lawton Zimmerman from Kent, winner of an exclusive video club competition in 90 Minutes magazine, and our special guest at Colney. He's also after my job. Well, we've had the ease of Ellen Road, the formality of stuff in Palace, and now the big one, Wimbledon. Yeah! Neil Adley across to take the corner as he did for the Wimbledon winner on Saturday against Leeds United. The header from Earl, and the goal from Dean Holdsworth. Right, trying to make something happen on the edge of the area, and he has done because that's a back pass to the referee by John Scales who was under severe pressure from Wright who actually forced him onto the ball I think but he prodded it back to his goalkeeper can Arsenal find a way past the entire Wimbledon team well there's your answer not once not twice not at all So the great levellers do it again, and in the process dump Arsenal into the bottom half of the table. Hardly ideal preparation for a fifth round cup tie. Fortunately, the Gunners had a not so secret weapon. Chapel. Sally, that's a fine header over the top of Tyler for right. That's been stalemate so far is broken open by an exceptional goal from Arsenal's main man in the FA Cup. Ian Wright gives them first blood here. Ian Selly set it up with the header, but there was a lot to do, and Wright did it superbly. Wright's 21st of the season, 10 of them now have come in cup ties. And he's turning this FA Cup campaign into a personal crusade. Oh, Linigan. First touch with Paul. Keane. Forrester seized on this. Keane's cross. Nigel Clark. And the equaliser was there for the taking. And to the considerable relief of Andy Linigan, it didn't materialise. Trying to find right again, it broke for Limpar. He's a bit scared to pick himself up. Given his recent record with uh, injury. Oh! A complete miss by David Seaman. And if that had been going uh, goalwards, it would have been an own goal by Lee Dixon. Seaman can see the funny side of it. How close was it? Well, it did the bobble, as you could see, a yard or so wide. Forest have taken the corner that accrued. Good job, that was wide of the goal. The pace was a bit too heavy, but the most important thing is it was wide of the goal. Here's Wright against Tyler. And Pierce, and still Wright, and still Wright! Oh. It gets better and better for Ian Wright and for Arsenal. And cross 
Ashley complains about the lack of cover. Forest players all around the pitch hanging their heads. Not just at conceding the goal, but at the timing of it in stoppage time at the end of the first half. Arsenal through, but Wright's personal triumph turned to tragedy with only seconds remaining. A groin strain which cost him an England place. Let's hope we're reporting on Ian's first international goal next time. And further cup progress. Remember, Arsenal are just five games away from two trophies. Arsenal have had some great goal scorers down the years. But in the club's 106-year history, only 12 men had scored 100 senior goals for the club. Now, Alan Smith has joined that exclusive band. He's in illustrious company, such as Cliff Baston, who won every major honour in the game by the time he was 19. Double winner John Radford. Highbury legend Ted Drake. Another star of the 30s, David Jack. And 70s favourite, Frank Stapleton. It's nice to get 100 goals, and uh, some can be more special than others. Uh, probably the one particular one was the first goal at Anfield, which uh, a night I'll never forget. Probably my biggest night in club football. Definitely my biggest night. into burn and Richardson behind it Adams has made a darting little run in there and Smith and Arsenal have scored the uh, Liverpool players are surrounding the referee asking him to uh, speak to a linesman the linesman never hesitated at all Brian I looked immediately towards the linesman well let's see here Winterburn's kick and glanced in by Smith. The hat trick I got against Man United when we'd already won the league at Highbury, you know, it was a bit of a carnival atmosphere and it was lovely to get that hat trick. Um, a lot of goals like that, really. I think. You know, when I joined Arsenal, um, I felt that they were on the verge of, of a lot of uh, trophies. Um, I joined and that I was already an Arsenal player and they, they won the Littlewoods Cup final. I watched that from the stands and, um, you know, the year after the, we had one season that I was there that we didn't win anything and then we won the league championship and then won it again two years later. So, I mean, I've won two golden boots, many that have got that 100 and there's a lot of great names in that, in that list. So, it's an honour to be, to be at the end of that list and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get a few more during my career at Arsenal. And so say all of us. Alan currently lies 12th in Highbury's all-time scorer's chart and as top scorer in all but one of his seasons at the club, Smudger has the pedigree to make an even greater impact. We'll leave you with a selection of his finest strikes to date. See you next time 